So last video, I talked about how the siphon brews some of my favorite coffee. So today, I thought we'd make an in-depth guide to teach everybody how I like to make my favorite coffees with a siphon. If you guys are new here, my name is Vincent and I'm the head roaster for Tails Coffee. If you guys love experimental and educational videos, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification so you can get the latest updates on my newest techniques. So let's do a quick overview of the siphon. As you guys can see here, I've got the two sizes that I use in my shop. We've got ourselves a three cup and a five cup, but because today's mostly gonna be focused on the three cup, we're gonna talk about that one. Um, now, as you can see, there's actually three components to it. There's the upper chamber, it's kind of like our pour over dripper, and then we've got ourselves the carafe at the bottom, and then we've got ourselves our, sorry, it's rolling around, but we've got ourselves the filter. Now in, in the demonstration, just before we start the demonstration, I'm gonna show everybody how we put the filter on into this filter thing and how we lock into place. But instead of a kettle, we actually have the flame controller. Now, normally it comes with a candlelight one, um, but I actually use the butane one because it gives us a lot more control. Turn it on like that and that's how we're gonna heat up our water. So now I'm just gonna go over why you would use this device and some of the pros and the cons of the device. Now we're gonna start with the pros and it is because we actually have a cloth filter. Now a cloth filter actually allows us to have a little bit more oils to pass through. Most of us are more familiar with a paper filter but the paper filter actually has a very, very kind of like nice film on it and it absorbs a lot of the flavors. Now the cloth allows a lot more flavors to pass through. Now the other thing is that this is actually a full immersion dripper because the water actually stays out there until I take the flame out, which means we can brew for as long or as short as time if we want. Gives us more control with the timing, unlike the, the pour over where it just starts dripping right away. And so we can have a longer extraction, a fuller extraction, and it can leave us with a sweeter and more round cup of coffee. So I know how we talked about how that the cloth filter is a great point to the siphon, but it is also the bad point to the siphon because it is actually so difficult to clean. Now cleaning it means I actually have to take it out, scrub it, not just with my hands, but probably with like a, a toothpaste or toothbrush, and then I actually have to pour more water to kind of flush all the, the remaining coffee in it. And then aside from that is, if you don't use it on a daily basis, certain flavors are gonna be starting to build up in the siphon filter. So the solution is to put it in a plastic bag or a Ziploc bag in the fridge or the freezer, but even then, it starts to absorb flavors. And so the siphon itself can become very finicky to, to work with because this cloth filter is so annoying to, to clean. So now let's quickly talk about how the siphon actually works. So we're gonna start by filling the bottom up with your water. And then we're gonna turn the heat source on. Now I'm gonna teach everybody how to turn, how much to turn on later, but we're gonna turn on and we're gonna start heating up the water. All this time, we're gonna be setting up a filter, our filter, and then we're gonna be hooking it into the, bot, into the bottom here. If you don't hook it into the, pro, into the top part properly, the grinds will just come back down. It will still continue to have a suction, but it will continue to come back down. So we're gonna leave it diagonal until this water actually heats up. And it's gonna start bubbling. Once it starts bubbling, we close the contraption and the water will go up. Now once it hits the top side, we're gonna wait a little bit and let it hit equilibrium so that the water temperature in the upper chamber is consistent from the top and the bottom. And once that happens, we're gonna pour the coffee grinds in there and stir. We're gonna stir everything in, make sure everything's saturated, and once we're done brewing the coffee, which is about 55 seconds, we're gonna take the flame source off, close it, and then let it drain. We're gonna give it a quick stir and let it drain. Once it's drained, we pop the lid, pop the top, leave it on the side, and you're ready to serve. So this time I want to dedicate a whole little section to just talking about how to control the flame, how to decide if your water's too hot or if it's too cool, okay? So when we turn the flame on, we're gonna look to cover just this tiny little rim at the bottom, okay? It's not gonna be too, too big of a thing. It just needs to kind of gently touch it. And that's how I determine if it's gonna be strong enough. Now, once it bubbles, it can go up. But if it's actually too cool and the flame is not strong enough, once it actually goes up and the cold air kind of hits it, the water temperature is not, not consistent yet, it'll actually drop back down. And so that's when you know your flame is not hot enough. So that's why I always wait a little bit to make sure the equilibrium in the upper chamber is strong enough for me to brew the coffee 
Because remember, when you pour the coffee grinds in, you're actually gonna cool it down a little bit more, which actually helps it drop a little bit, uh, potentially. And so you want to make sure it's hot enough. Now the other way for me to do it is, is if you're new, you can actually turn up the heat quite a bit more and you're gonna get a lot more bubbles. Now, once it hits the top, we're gonna have a lot of violent bubbles. And if it persists as such a strong kind of large bubbles, you're gonna to wanna to turn the flame down. And once it becomes these fine, tiny little bubbles, air bubbles that pop up from the bottom, that's when we know this is the perfect water temperature. And so you're gonna see in the demo what I mean by a perfect little, perfect little things, and I'll show you some of the larger bubbles, and we don't want any of that. We just want these fine little gas bubbles. So we're gonna quickly go over the stirring technique now. Now, most people are more familiar with this. Uh, most siphonists actually, like 99.99%, that's, so anyone that's not me, will be using this, and it's because it helps you press down all the grinds a little bit faster, and you can create a larger wave. Now for me though, as you guys know, I'm uh, a chopstick fanatic. I still will use a chopstick, even for the siphon. Now how I stir is I always start from the middle and really deep. Now when you're in the middle, you actually start pulling all the current around and it pulls all the grinds in. And then we're gonna spin our way out to the outside rim and it's gonna flush everything around. And then we're gonna continue to guide it un until the 55 second mark when we take the flame off and we're gonna give it a really, really strong stir once again and that's the end of it. Uh, with the paddle, you'd be looking to do the same thing. Some people like to just leave it on top and you can get, and just like leave it on top of the, like your siphon, like this. And what happens is you'll be able to see um, the different layers of the siphons. You're gonna get like the gases, you're gonna get the, the, the crust or the grinds, and then you're gonna get the liquids. Um, for me, I like to stir continuously because I don't want to see the crust forming. It just means that the water is not extracting from the grinds as strongly. Um, so that's why I always stir the whole time. But the larger paddle does help you press down your grinds and gives it a lot stronger of an agitation during your siphons. Speaking of fire this video, last week you guys all saw me in my brand new house. Well, unfortunately it burned down, all right? Because we were testing the siphon video there and then Vince was just like, oh, I'm gonna leave the flame unattended. And then he, he just left and my entire house burned down. So now I need all of you to help me, all right? Visit tailscoffee.com and purchase some, some damn coffee, all right? Purchase single pour. That's, that one's my favorite, so, so keep getting it. Um, and make sure to use code Candice for 15% off. All right, hopefully you'll see me in a new house next week, but we'll see. So the recipe today will be 20 grams of coffee beans to 260 grams of water. And the water temperature obviously is going to be whatever's at the upper chamber. But our grind size, something I always forget to mention, it's going to be a medium fine. For those of you that don't know, I actually use all the same grind size for all my manual brews, whether it's siphon, V60, switch, origami, it's all the same grind size. It's just a medium fine. I'll be showing you guys a picture, so nice and easy. So I'm gonna quickly just now just show everybody how to put the filter on. Um, if you guys wanna take a look on the filter here, you can see there's a bit of a string. There are two strings and they pull tight together the filter. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have this side, the string side up. We're gonna put this facing down and then we're going to pull the strings tight. Kind of awkward pulling from the side, but there we go. Once it's tight, you guys can see that there's gonna be like this like, oh, flower little pattern. We're gonna pull it all the way, and then we're gonna tie it once. Uh, we're gonna pull that tight, as tight as we possibly can. You don't want any of the air bubbles in there in the future, so we're gonna pull as tightly as we can. And then we're gonna do one more knot, and then pull again. So that's how we're gonna put the filter on. And then we're gonna grab a pair of scissors, and then snip. And here we have the filter. So a quick tip is to always just run your filter under the, the water. Um, it actually helps it open up a little bit. I don't know if you guys know, but a dry cloth, when you get water through it, it has a little bit of resistance. So I run mine under the, the tap. It could be cold, it could be hot. I give it a little scrub and press it down while I'm at it. Make sure everything is, all the fibers completely open. So now we're gonna weigh our water. Here we have, we're gonna be doing 260 grams. Okay guys, nice, perfect. Right on the dot. 
And now we're going to get it over the flame. See, just like that. And we're gonna turn it on and click. Notice how the flame started off really, really large. I don't know if you guys can see, but you know, we're going to be turning it down so it touches into a straight line right into the middle and the center of the bulb. And so remember, when we put this on, we've got to make sure the hook is open all the way down, dropped and hooked. So this is very important. I made this mistake many times before and you know, it never turns out well. Try to center it as much as you can and we're going to let it heat up. You guys can see that there's already gonna be a little bit of bubbles coming up. So really quickly, I, I don't think you guys can see it through my white shirt. So we're gonna use this. This is what the flame looks like. And you're gonna notice that the flame is straight up and it's not too wide and not too small, okay? We're, going, we're looking for the straight up kind of a flame size. That is kind of the ideal way to start it off. Now that we see everything is boiling, we're going to close this. I'm gonna put the Hario side facing you guys, just like that, very easy. And we're gonna wait for the water to, to ascend. Here the water is going up. We're gonna see some of the bubbles starting to come out already. Notice that they're very gentle. See how it pulses? That's because it's trying to get used to the, the cooler temperature that is up here. Now, some of you may say that there's gonna be evaporation and everything. Uh, we're just gonna leave it at that. See how strong these bubbles are? You can see in the backside right over here. I don't know if you guys can see that, but on the backside, there's some larger bubbles. Now, sometimes this happens with the filter set. So what we're gonna do is just gonna move it away from the filter. And voila, we have found a point where these bubbles that bubbles does not come out. Now that's different from like it being too hot, okay? That's just, there's probably an air bubble when I was making the filter, but. As you can see, the, the gases are quite powerful and quite strong. So what we want to do is we actually want to lower the flame just a touch and let it kind of hit in equilibrium. We just want the, the bubbles to be a little bit weaker and we can start ourselves our brew. So we're kind of getting there. You guys can see that? Yay. Bubbles have now subsided. It is now quite, okay. So we're gonna start 55 seconds in here. The timer starts after I start stirring, okay? You can see if I don't really stir, nothing really goes down. Not a lot of extraction. So we're gonna start the timer now and right in the middle first and push all the way out. Notice how it just draws everything in, kind of like a little whirlpool. And we're gonna start vigorously and then slow ourselves back down. And once we hit the 55 second mark, we're gonna take it off the flame. We're at the 55, we take it off and give it a quick stir. Notice the little crema we have at the top and then how everything is now just draining right down. That is the perfect flame temperature. And I can already expect a really good cup of coffee from this. So now we pop the thing. We've got ourselves our mound, our perfect little mound. We're just gonna leave this on the side and Eric will deal with this. And we're ready to serve the coffee now. So guys, now it's time to taste the coffee. If you guys can see, if you guys can't see, there's a lot more oils in this. It's wonderful to smell. And another little tip is wait a little bit before you drink it. It's super hot, okay? This thing just came off boiling, it came off a flame, so it's a really, really, really hot cup of coffee. The roast I have is closer to a, a medium, and so the color, as you can see, is actually pretty light for a medium. It's lighter than my pour-overs. It is faster. Our total time was about a minute and 25 seconds, guys. That is a full drain. It is a super quick cup of coffee. 
So it's been about five minutes. I think it's cool enough to drink. Damn, it's still kind of hot, okay? But anyways, let's suffer a little bit. Mmm. So from my angle right here, I can actually see all the oils just kind of on top. So boy, is that clear. This is a really round flavor, but it has a nice clarity, nice depth to it. And so this coffee is exactly as how I would imagine it. Nice and round, but super complex and super deep. And I think it's attributed to how it's actually a full immersion. We have nice control of a flame. We have consistently high water temperature, but nothing like too harsh on it. So it actually over extracts and this, all the oils coming down really, really helps bring a great balance to the coffee. So the siphon, definitely one of my favorite brewing devices. Cheers guys. Thanks for watching. If you guys have a siphon, let me know in the comments what you guys think about it. If you guys like this video, please make sure to hit the thumbs up. It really helps us and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.